Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, Nolan and I are just hitting up some different museums. We're here at the Manuals River Hibernia Interpretation Center. Uh, we're also gonna go to the Johnson Geo Center, which we showed a video of last year. And we're also going to go to The Rooms. The Rooms is a place downtown St. John's and it has a natural history museum in it. So today's gonna be more about like museum exhibits, fossils. Uh, here at the Manuals Hibernia Interpretation Center, there's a river here, uh, just over here and you can find uh, trilobite fossils in there. There's some formations along the hike that you can do in this, in this trail, some outcropping that you can see some trilobite fossils in it. So we're gonna go check that out. We're gonna check out the rooms. We're gonna check out the Geo Center, show you some cool fossils and some cool Newfoundland rocks, and come along with us. Just me and Nolan today. Let's go. Most of the fossils that were found here were found by this physics professor, Ricardo Levi Setti. And he collected most of the fossils that you can find here, the trilobite fossils. He had a, a, an interest in collecting trilobite fossils outside of his area of expertise. And this was the main fossil he found of Paradoxus davides. He donated this back to the museum for free. And he passed away recently, but donated his entire trilobite collection back to the Manuals River Museum. Pretty cool. So at Manuals River, there is 12 different species out of the 200 different trilobite, trilobite species. Here's a few of them. So we're on the trail now, on the Manual, Manuals River Trail. This is the Manuals River. We're gonna head to the uh, dig site. You're supposed to be able to see some trilobite fossils down there at the dig site. You're not allowed to take any, but you're allowed to look at the loose, through the loose stuff. So we're gonna go down there now, see if we can see anything. Look at this tree, this big uh, spruce tree. Decided it wanted to become a tree of its own. <laughs> Oh, that's weird. I've never seen anything like that. Newfoundland's weird. <laughs> Newfoundland's weird. I think this could be one of the beds. This is the fossil bed here. You're allowed to dig through the loose stuff here. You're not allowed to pull anything out of the face.
So we're here at the uh, trilobite fossil bed site. You're allowed to sift through this loose stuff. And we've been here about 10 minutes. And we found, looks like the tail of one here. Only small. And the uh, people back at the museum told us it's pretty rare to find a full one out here now. But that looks like a half of one. So pretty cool. It's a catch and release type day, so we'll throw it back. No one's over there looking. We'll sift a little bit more and see what we can find. That looks like one right there. Little back end of one. little fossilized something. Not sure what that is. Got a cool part of a trilobite here. Not sure of the species, but we can try to look it up. Also found a free cheek. These are the pieces that fall off of the trilobite first when they shed their exoskeleton. The little, the little hangers on the side there. I'll show a picture. That looks like one of them. Found another one that I split open here. Just peeled these two pieces apart. Actually, these two pieces. Found that right there. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I pulled apart one of these rocks up on the bank, and I think it is the torso of one of the species, and it's right on the edge there. Yeah, you can see the bumps? Yeah. Yeah. I think you got one. Yeah. Not a full one, but we're getting there. Cool. Uh, I think this uh, worm burrow that I found up on the bank... Definitely, you can see the. She told us in the exhibit you'll find a lot. You'll of these. find some of these over here. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Still pretty cool. Here we found a uh, some sort of shell or barnacle-looking thing. Not sure what that would be. Definitely something. There's another one there. This looks like a some sort of stick or I don't know some piece of flora looks big definitely something I think Nolan and I have had enough and uh, it's pretty fun coming out here digging for fossils these are some pretty old Cambrian beds you know hundreds of millions of years old so it's really cool to be able to sift through them and look for ancient fossils. So we're going to go off to the next site now, which is the uh, Johnson Geo Center. Every time we come to Newfoundland, we come to the Johnson Geo Center. It's just a thing me and Nolan do. Come check out the geology exhibits, uh, see what they have in the gift shop. I've shown this particular piece of Labradorite from this museum before on the channel, but I just wanted to, sh to emphasize that there's only two known locations to find Labradorite in the world. One is Labrador, which is what it's named after, and this is Labrador. It's part of the mainland of Newfoundland. And this particular piece was found in the Pearly Gates Fjord, which is basically where most of the Labrador Labradorite comes from. See, this is a really nice piece. It's got this the really nice Labrador essence feature to it. The other place, of course, you can find Labradorite is in Madagascar. The difference between the two, I find, is that the Newfoundland Labradorite is a little blacker, darker, and the 
the Madagascar Labradorite it's more of a grayish color. They both produce the same labradorescence sheen effect, but uh, the Labradorite from Newfoundland is a little darker, and it's considered more valuable. It's more sought after. But you can only, it's really impossible place to get to to Rockhound because you know, this, is, this is a treacherous place to get to. We're going to be trying to pick up some Labradorite here on our trip. Uh, the museum here is all out of it. It's a popular uh, item in their gift shop. They sell out of it pretty quickly, so we're going to have to go downtown and see if we can get some in the shops. But I'd like to get some to tumble. See if I can do a tumbling run of some rough Labradorite. Check out this big old geode. They didn't die this real. It's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. <laughs> this is a really cool exhibit here. It's kind of the same phenomenon we talked about when we were looking at the tetrapod fossils from Blue Beach in Scotland. Here's a similar thing. Here's a trilobite fossil from Killigrew's Conception Bay, Newfoundland. You can find it right there. And on the other side of the ocean, this trilobite fossil was found in Wales. And it's both of these fossils were found in beds that are the same and once were in the same region when Pangaea was together. So it's really cool how you can have the continental drift go apart and you have fossils from the same lithological unit found. The same exact fossil. Pretty cool. There's some tree fern. And that's some lepidodendron. Same thing we can find at Blue Beach back home. Some petrified wood here. Stigmaria root here. So this is Carboniferous Carboniferous Flora. Their Newfoundland has a rich mining history. Uh, one of the things I used to mine here was actually fluorite. Here's a piece. This is a piece of floor spire. See the green fluoride in there, and this stuff was used in the smelting process of aluminum. It was, a, it was an additive to that process. This structure is called an anukshuk. The First Nations people of Canada used to build these to symbolize that they were actually here on the land. You can find these all over Canada, especially up north. What was, your, what was your highest? 14.7. Alright, go for it. Ooh, 10.9. Not bad. Ooh, 11.5. Getting better. 16.4. Feet closer together at single point contact. Feet together. No, yeah, too long. <laughs> Oh, that was terrible. Here's an example of some twinning of crystals. These are huge crystals. Even though we're in the Newfoundland Geological Museum, these specimens are from Tennessee. This calcite, you can see the twinning of these cool crystal shapes. 
they have some pyrite crystal twinning here. That's from Spain.